Well, I'm back with you, brother from home, with the follow-up of a story that happened at the big track. Now, like I say, I could go into the big track because I was always delivering clothes. Just so happened that this day, uh, it must have been about four in the afternoon, I had delivered some clothes to a player named Preacher. Now, Preacher was a dope boy, okay? What level of selling dope, I don't know. But Preacher was a dope boy. So I took the clothes up to the big track, got in, you know, got them to Preacher. He gave me my money. You know, like I told you, I charged $100 on a delivery. So, got my little money. I'm standing around watching them shoot a little dice. And I'm watching Preacher because it just so happens at this particular time, he was up at the table. And I'm watching him. And this boy is losing thousands upon thousands. He just looked at me and said, I feel lucky now. And he rolled the dice with a five thousand dollar bet and loss. I said to myself, boy, he could have just gave that to me and we'd have been in the same boat. He'd have been out of it, I'd have been in it. But that was it. So he said, come on, Jim. He said, uh, let's go downstairs and have a drink. Now, where the big track was located, there was a bar on the corner called Hilda's 19th Hole. Now, this is where a lot of them, they come out of the big track, they go down there and get a drink and whatnot. And I was familiar with the place because, like I said, earlier in my life, I lived across the street from the place. So, Hilda's was called Hilda's 19th Hole. Now, why that was, because a lot of these guys, back then, they played golf. So, a lot of times you had joints that were called a 19th Hole or like the, the 10th inning, you know, in baseball and this, that, and the other. But it was called Hilda's. So we're sitting in there having this drink, and then all of a sudden, we hear gunshots, because that's how close we were to it. Pow, 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 pow. And all of a sudden, I said, oh boy. So we peeked our head out the door. Mind you, just out the door. And we saw guys running down the steps from the big track. I mean, they were running down the steps. Now, here's where the story gets interesting. It was an execution. It was a hit put out on Raider Man. Now, who was Raider Man? Like I said, Raider Man was one of the biggest dope kingpins, I'll call it that, you know, in Harlem at the time. And most of that was his territory. So he was murdered right there in the big track. Now, understand, every guy in there went in there and had a little piece on him. You know, so it wasn't that just a few guys, everybody, when I would go in there, sometimes I'd be the only one without some heat. I ain't had no gun, I didn't want to deal with no gun, but most of them boys had guns. So we had all these gunshots, we don't know what's happening, just that they're running down. Well, it just so happened that Raider Man got executed. And now, it's a big turmoil in Harlem at that particular time. Nobody knows who did it. They don't know why, the total reason why. Somebody knew the reason why, but at any rate, Raider Man was a client of ours, and prior to that, he had ordered like 20 suits of clothes from us. So we had all these clothes. We didn't work because we, he, he already paid for them, because like I say, those boys paid up front. So here we are now. Now they're preparing him for viewing. Now listen to me how I say this, preparing him for viewing. There's a funeral home, 141st Street, St. Nick, called Benton. Benter or Benton, I can't remember. It's either Benton or Benter. It still exists. It's still there. Benter is no longer there. He's made his transition along with most of those guys because they were a lot older than I was. And, and at Benter, if you're still alive, God bless you, brother, because you got to be about 100 years old. Well, at any rate, I got the story firsthand from Benton because it's his funeral parlor. He told Ori and I personally that 
they, they had his body lay in state. Now, you know, normally when you hear somebody laying in state, it's like a president or a governor or a senator, a senator, somebody official. Well, he said, we're laying his body in state. They came, picked up the clothes, and Mentor told us every three hours, they wheeled Ray the man's body out and redressed him, put a whole new suit of clothes on him. We gave him all we had. I don't know how many more he got from his family, right? Then, a friend of Ori's, who also happened to be a friend of one of my best partners growing up, mother, her name was Ruth Mitchell. She was a manicurist. She told us, as well as Benta told us, that every day she would come in, they paid her to come in and strip his nails and redo them with a clear polish every single day. His barber, um, who cut hair, there was two main barber shops. You had the Shalimar and you had the Apollo, I think it was the Apollo Barber. But uh, at any rate, the barber came in and did one of these things every day. Every single day. Benta told us, and I know for a fact because Preacher told me, but I didn't know how much. Preacher spent $5,000 on a reef for this man with black and white carnations shaped like dice. They had shaped like dice. They had a king's throne. They had a crown made out of carnations and whatnot. They had a king's scepter. They had a, 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 a reef made in the shape of a Cadillac car. Mentor told us he, outside of his two floral cars that he had, he said he had to hire three pickup trucks to load all those flowers to take to the grave site. Now this is, this is the man who did this, told Ori and I that personally. So, who, well, I can't call him a liar. Cause we don't know, we didn't go. Cause like I said, that wasn't my thing. Players from all over the country, and I'm gonna say the world, came to pay their last respects to this man. They laid his body out for 10 days. So the players from all over could come pay their respects to this man. Now you tell me he wasn't a big guy for them to do that? Then, I believe they buried him in Connecticut. They got a parade permit from the city of New York to have a caravan go to the grave site with this man's body to lay him to rest. Benta told us there was over 150 50 Cadillacs in the funeral procession. Now, I, I, I've always, I didn't see the procession, don't get me wrong. I'm going by the, the funeral director, what he told us personally. Because he knew my mentor Ori very, very well. Because we did clothes for him too. He came in there on a regular basis. He was always coming in there telling us who he's laying to rest. Because if you were somebody in Harlem in those days, Benton was always, if you were a big shot, Benton was one of the big time, I'm not saying he was the only one, but he was one of the funeral parlors, as that's what we called them back then, that would lay you to rest. He knew how to lay you out. And he laid Brother Raider Man out with a different outfit every three hours. Now, I used to say to myself, I never knew just how big Raider Man was until that went down. I said to myself, you got to be big for them to go through all of that for a you. And for all these players to spend that much money, Benta guessed that it was somewhere in the neighborhood about $150,000 worth of floral reefs that was spent on this man. He wasn't sure, but I know for a fact, Preacher, the guy who I was up there earlier with, when the man got shot, I know he spent $5,000 because he showed me the receipt to have carnations, black and white carnations, uh, laid out in the shape of dice. And, and he told me there were crowns and scepters and thrones and Cadillacs out there. So these are the type of people that I met, congregated with, saw what happened, saw what went down. So like I say, from a brother from Harlem who had a high school education, is this not an education that I got 
now knowing the streets, not just being on the streets, but now somewhat being in the streets. Now I'll be back with something else, but I, I needed to tell you guys that I, I almost left it out because I wasn't sure how it would be perceived, but, but why not? This was a part of my life. So once again, I'll be back, the brother from Harlem, with the high school education. Thank you very much. One of these things.